So, hi everyone, my name is Jordan, uh, and in my talk today I'm going to tell you a bit about my story, what I do, and uh, hopefully give you a bit of advice. So, yeah, uh, I'll start by telling you a little bit about me. Uh, I'm, I'm 15 years old. I'm from Waterford, which is a small city in Ireland. Uh, we're mostly known for our sort of crystal glass and our bread rolls called the Blah. So that's, that's my city. Um, I'm a self-taught programmer, so at the age of nine I, I just pretty much taught myself how to, to code. And since then I've founded two startups, uh, both of them be called Teachware and Casey Games, which I'll tell you about in a minute. But uh, yeah, I'm also a speaker. So I'll tell you a bit about my story first of all. Uh, when I was nine years old, I used to play a game called Club Penguin. I presume some of you have heard about Club Penguin, yeah? Yeah, so I used to play Club Penguin and I saw that some of the people who were playing Club Penguin made sort of cheap blogs and websites about it. And pretty much I thought that would be sort of a fun thing to do. So uh, one day I got my grandmother to buy me a book on website development. Uh, so I managed to convince my grandmother to do that. And once I did that, I started sort of learning HTML, which is the, the programming language for web. And eventually I had a Club Penguin website done. So I did that for a couple of years. And then as I sort of progressed, I wanted to get a new challenge. And I thought, what better way to improve my programming skills than by trying to make an app for iPhone. But for those of you who know, to make an iPhone app, you need an Apple Mac, which, for someone like me especially, are pretty, pretty expensive, right? So uh, I did something sort of, sort of strange. So first of all, I asked my parents, would they be able to help me get a Mac? But uh, they didn't really understand. Uh, so what I did is I forged a letter from Apple, pretending to be an Apple executive, send it, sent it to my parents, uh, <laughs> explaining to them like, what, what like, a Mac would do for me. And uh, yeah, they bought it. So I, was, uh, yeah. so I managed to get the, the Mac from there. So yeah, that, that worked. Uh, I, then a couple of years later, I met an Apple executive and told him about the story. But uh, yeah, he, he wasn't very uh, keen on that. But anyway, okay. yeah. uh, I'll, I'll go on. So basically, after I got my Mac, I started doing a bit of like programming. And eventually, I got my first app, which was like a really, really bad version of Space Invaders called Alien Ball vs. Humans Out. Uh, I just saw it as sort of an experimental project, like I didn't really see like the commercial value of it, but like uh, a day after I released it, I was called the youngest uh, app developer in Europe, so that kind of boosted my profile. So eventually the game went to sort of number one in the charts, and I kind of realized that this could be sort of a business opportunity for me. And so yeah, that's, I started from there pretty much, and yeah, so that's, that's my, my story. Uh, now I'll just quickly run through a couple of my projects. So as I mentioned, uh, Alien Ball vs. Humans, it was sort of a mobile version of Space Invaders. I released it in February 2012 when I was 12 years old, and it went to number one on the games charts. So that's pretty cool. It was ahead of like Minecraft. That, that was fun. Um, yeah, so in the technical aspect, it took like a couple of weeks to produce, and that was, uh, that was sort of fun. Uh, another project I did was called My Little World, which, as you can see, the graphics, again, very bad. Uh, it was an adventure sort of puzzle game, which I released in June 2013. So I was just kind of doing my thing. And then I got an email from an Apple executive to go and launch the game in New York uh, at one of the Apple stores there. So that was pretty cool, I suppose. But yeah, uh, I, I released an ebook about it, explaining like the story behind the character. It has a level creator in it. And yeah, it took a, it took a huge effort. Uh, there's another game I did called Food World, which is similar to Club Penguin. Uh, it's like a, an online virtual world. And then I took a different approach. So going from games to something called Teachware uh, was, was a, yeah, a different approach for me. Uh, I was in school one day, and uh, I noticed that one of my teachers, so like, do you all know like, the, the big book that the teacher has to sort of like take in attendance and like, put in like, exam results, things like that? So, so my teacher had that. And it was towards the end of the year of school, and she just lost it completely. So all the information that she'd had from the entire year in school was just gone by losing a book. So I just thought like, I could sort of make a, a more secure way to, uh, to like, manage that. And so I created Teachware, which was an online cloud-based student management system, managed like, attendance, exams, profiles, things like that. And my teachers were very impressed with it. My, my, my classmates and fellow, like my friends, weren't really, uh, <laughs> because because when uh, this, she sort of like 
lost the book, all their bad exam results were gone, so like there was no evidence. So uh, you now there was a more secure way, so that was, that was pretty uh, bad for them. But yeah, it did pretty well for me. I launched it at a big conference a couple of years ago. And yeah, so looking at the technical aspect, again, it, it wasn't too, too hard to create. Uh, now I'll talk about my current project. So as I said, I've been programming since I was nine years old. And so as I've sort of progressed, I've become very passionate about programming and like education as well. So what I want to try and do with, with this project, which I'll tell you about in a sec, is inspire the next generation of programmers and the creative thinkers. So Kids Code is basically an online virtual world similar to Club Penguin that combines the, the multiplayer fun aspect with programming itself. So users and kids will be able to log on, create their character, and like code their world, make games with their friends, things like that. So I've been working on it for a couple of months. Uh, I, I presume all of you have heard of Flappy Bird. So the guy who made Flappy Bird is really interested in, in it. He's given me sort of like assets to, for people to make their own Flappy Bird. Uh, we're looking at getting investment, things like that. So yeah, with Kids Code, I want to inspire the next generation by introducing them to the fundamentals of programming, making it fun. Uh, also, you learn like collaborative skills, like teamwork skills by pl playing with your friends and making games with your friends. And also like creative skills because programming can be, can be a really, really creative force. And I see it as an art form more than anything else. So yeah, that's, that's Kids Code. Uh, some other things I do, I'm the official ambassador for Biz World Ireland, which is like a really cool program that uh, gets like really like five, six year old kids and like teaches them business and entrepreneurship. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so I've also worked with the European Commission, like the European Union, which uh, was, was fun. Uh, I've sort of gave my opinion on like the digital agenda and like how, how like, we're like a young person's perspective on how Europe is moving forward in terms of its digital aspect. Uh, I did an internship at Mine Candy, I presume all of you have heard of Mine Candy, Mushy Monsters. Yeah, so uh, that was a pretty cool office. They have a slide in their office, so that was fun. Uh, I also play a lot of football. So does everyone know who this guy is? Garabea. Okay, so uh, this is a cool story I have. So like I said, yeah, I play a lot of football. And one thing that I really want to do is try to combine my, my, my business aspect with the things that I like to do. So I've tried to make sort of football apps and things like that. But uh, one of the things I sort of did, I was at a conference in Spain, and I was just doing my, my, like, my talk like this, and I did an interview with the Spanish TV outlet afterwards. And by luck, uh, Florentino Perez, who's the president of Real Madrid, just kind of stumbled across my interview, thought it was pretty cool, and invited me to be a presidential guest at Real Madrid. So uh, I, got to, I got to meet him. Uh, he, gave, like, he gave me a full tour of the whole stadium. I got to see a match in, in the box, and got to meet like, some of my favorite players, so, like Gareth Bale, like, met Ronaldo as well, so like something that I've been lucky with to combine my, my hobbies and things that I love with my business sort of aspect. So uh, just to like round it off, I'll tell you about what it's like to be a young entrepreneur and uh, some advice that I have for those who are interested in getting into it. So the first thing is, I'm, I see it as getting a head start. Like in 10 years, I'll be like 25 and I'll already have like 13 years experience of working in the industry. So that's a pretty cool sort of stat to have. And like, I just, I just saw it as though being, being like young and knowing what I wanted to do, uh, I, I looked there and I could see I there was pretty much nothing stopping me from starting off what I wanted to do. And that's that, thanks to like the internet and things like that. So if you like know what you want to do, uh, don't let your age hold you back because uh, like there's a lot of advantages to starting young. And yeah, like as, thanks to the internet, it's, it's a lot easier as well. Like, if you had looked like 30 years ago, if I wanted to publish a game, I would have to like get a game publisher, then have to get physical copies into like stores and things like that. Now all I have to do is click a button and I'm like live on like billions of smartphones, things like that. Uh, so also it's great publicity for like my products, like because I'm young, like a lot of media people like to like talk about me, so that helps get my products out there, which boosts sales, so that's cool. Um, also, uh, hold on. Yeah, so I get the opportunity to go to like really cool places and meet amazing contacts. Like like events like this today, I've had the opportunity to go to like countries like India. Like I've been like the States a few times. I also got to go to Saudi Arabia for a conference. So that was really cool. So I've been given a good opportunity to like go to great places, meet amazing contacts. Like that's going back to the head start thing. The, the contacts you could like meet at conferences like this could be like amazing. Like uh, it, it goes back to the head start. Like contacts that I've met as a young person will like help me so much in the future. Uh, but in saying that, there can be some disadvantages as well. 
like for example it's hard to work full time because like, I have to go to school as well uh, and I like have to like take a break sometimes so I think for, for me to get the best of what I do I have to have a balance because a balance is really important. So like I go to school normally, uh, do my thing in school then afterwards I sort of work on my business and then I take a break from everything on the weekend just like hang around with my friends. Uh, so that, that helps me keep going. Uh, not always being taken seriously, that's another big one. Like in the past I've tried to get things like investment or men mentorship things like that and because of my age it sort of let me down a bit uh, like people like big people like with their suits and investors and things don't really like investing in like really really young kids uh, so like that's well it's, it's sort of changing now I suppose uh, over the last few years a lot more kids have gotten into it and that's sort of inspired uh, a lot a lot more like investor people to, to take kids seriously because kids are have like a really creative like pow power and also something that I've seen kids is they're fearless. They don't think of like what happens if I do this wrong. They just want to see the positive aspect of it. So yeah, like not always taken seriously can be a big one as well though. Uh, yeah, so my advice, like going back to it, if you know what you want to do or if you want to try something, don't let your age stop you because like I said, there's a lot of advantages to, to like starting up. Also like another thing I'll say is never give up because like over the past I've had different obstacles. Again with my age, like games not working, different bugs. And because I kept going, I've, I've been able to see the positive side of it. So, yeah, uh, that's me. Thanks very much for listening. Man, I feel old right now. <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about some of those challenges that you faced being young and, and how do you kind of get how do you get through that? You're meeting an investor and they say you're too young, like it must yeah. it must be difficult. So how do you power through and kind of keep going? I just look at like I ha like I have a lot of like motivation, like I, I just look at the, the end goal really. Like that's like inspiring like millions of people, like like with kids code, like trying to get investment with that. The end goal is really I'll just be inspiring kids to learn programming. So mm -hmm. I look at the end goal all the time and like that, that motivates me to keep going through it. What about a bit of practical advice? So a lot of kids here uh, will be learning programming in school now. They'll learn things like Blockly and all that kind of stuff, and you'll be moving up yeah. to more complicated things. But but what do you, what can you use at home that's going to make you uh, better and more proficient? How how do you kind of learn how to put your first game out there? And stuff? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of huge advice on the internet. Like I just use YouTube really sometimes. Like if I have a problem, I just go on YouTube, and there's so much help there. Also, the Kids Code game, which would be sort of aimed at like more younger kids, but that would be that hopes to be like a really cool platform. So that'll be like kidscodegame.com. That's that's available there. But also like yeah, get my plug out there. But also like um, <laughs> it's like it's YouTube. There's lots of forums and like people are really supportive on the internet. Most of them are anyway. And what's your kind of biggest ambition for the future? You must have more projects uh, on the line. You're growing your company now. Yeah. Uh, what does 10 years time look like for you? Uh, I, like, I love to live here. London is like my favourite yeah. city in the world and there's a huge like startup atmosphere here so I'd love to live here but just keep doing my own thing like starting companies and mainly in tech is, is what I love doing so yeah. And in terms of contacts and advice for people here who's this is their first conference how can they uh, approach speakers and come and get some advice from you? I just just come up and talk to me like, I'm, I'm okay, like that's what I did. that's what I did in my first conference. I just go up and talk to people, and most people are really supportive and like have a lot of advice. So just don't be afraid to like, talk to people. Okay, thank you very much, Jordan Casey. Thanks very much.